All right, ji. Good morning, everybody. Good afternoon. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Javed Iqbal. I have a lot of digital areas, a lot of digital areas, a lot of digital areas, a And what I find this industry is one of the most fascinating things that this industry represents is it embodies the future of not only technology, but the human body. And whether you look at transportation and so many others that are leading the pack right now, Uber just bought Kareem in Pakistan, so many other things are happening. This is one industry that brings it all together. If you think about how a lot of the data that's being collected about you is the first frontier that these technology companies are attacking. The Googles, the Amazons, the whatevers, which is your human mind. Never in the history of civilization has the mind been connected like this. Imagine you don't have access to your WhatsApp for just one simple day. And WhatsApp is not just a, just a communication device. Your life is almost a dashboard. Just then, cell phone off. Hota hai, we all feel like we don't have oxygen right now. But where does this go? The human mind is the first frontier. The next frontier that is going to be tackled is the human body. And that puts all of you right in the middle of it. So, as many people are sitting in the mouth of the phone, they ask themselves this, that as when Google and Apple and others start to understand your body better than you, what happens? The answers in bits and pieces have already been coming to you. I mean, I was sitting uh, through the last panel, and I had a 20-slide deck. And I think that panel pretty much covered it all. So I had to change the whole thing around. Dr. Zaki, I'm going to talk about this later. But the interesting part about this is where the human body and machine are going forward leaping forward together is what's going to make the next generation even more interesting. The fourth industrial revolution, World Economic Forum, ki bar bar baat hoti hai, what they suggest is the next frontier not only involves the human body, but embodies how innovation is going to happen through and with the human body. And I'll give you a story. Two weeks ago, I had been asked to speak at Google in New York. And the topic was artificial intelligence and the, and the future of humans. The premise of that talk was how humans and machines are going to work together for a formidable future. And I told them a little story. In the year 2012, I was with a company called Salesforce. I was in the San Francisco office, and we had taken one of our larger customers, Groupon, for an executive briefing center, just go IT ki term me EBC kehte. And in the first break, as I was pouring coffee, one of my colleagues laughingly said, Javed, you would not believe what my six-year-old daughter did yesterday. I said, what did she do? He said, I was sitting in my basement getting ready for the week ahead. And she came and she sat right next to me and she sat there for a good 30 seconds. And finally she broke her silence and said, Daddy, why isn't this TV turning on? So my colleague said, you have to turn the TV on for it to turn on. And she said, uh, no, it should know I'm here. It should just turn on by itself. 
Now, when I heard this, my entire rest of the day and the entire night, which I couldn't sleep, I kept thinking to myself, that a six-year-old girl who is uncorrupted by a Google query, Harun Sab just talked about how he looked at the Google thing for fourth industrial as well. She still believes that she's entitled to have the TV turn on just because she's there. Now, this concept was a lot more fresher in 2012. In 2019, Alexa and so many other technologies have solved that primarily. But the concept of that little girl never leaves my mind. In every board meeting that I go to, every board that I advise, every CEO that I talk to, I ask them just this one question. Behind all your achievements and big pharma talk and banking talks and all of that, are you ready for that little human? Are you ready for her to become your employee? Are you ready for her to become your vendor? And the scariest part, are you ready for her to become your customer? Because ek dafa wo customer ban gayi aapki, as she grows, she will not stop the entitlement of just presence and a TV on. She will ask you more questions. She will evolve. Now, someone mentioned earlier on the panel about millennials. Pakistan has 135 million millennials. Let me repeat that. 135 million millennials that you all need to be innovating for. But millennial is the least of your concerns in my opinion. Generation Alpha are people who are born between 2010 and will be born between then and 2025. There are 250 million of them being born every week. That generation is born into AI. That generation never would have the luxury to think for themselves. You and I thought for ourselves. We can tell when Google Maps tells us to turn right, we say, shut up. I know the city better than you. These little children that are born after 2010 would rarely make their own decisions. Imagine when someone comes and tries to tell you something to watch on Netflix, you already have Netflix telling you what to watch. You already have the Amazons of the world. You already have the Daraz of the world. They get it wrong, but eventually they'll get it right. So the question becomes, how ready are you? I heard this panel, that was the only panel I heard, unfortunately, I couldn't be here earlier in the morning. Talk about collaboration, talk about data. They talked about how the next revolution is going to be more artificial, more intelligent. But are your minds really open to that? I'll tell you an alarming thing. In 2017 was the first time we established an office in Pakistan. Uh, and we started a program with IBA. And as I was creating that program, Dr. Zaru Sen, many of you know him from IBA. He's ex-pharma, Abbott. He suggested, let's do something for pharma. I said, okay. Now, interestingly for me, um, I had consulted for the FDA on an innovation project. You might think I'm lying when I, said, when I say that I wrote the first serialization white paper in 2008 in the world. I can repeat that or I can share that later with you. But we brought 15 pharma CEOs to an IBA room 
Excellent. And I had them go around the room in a round robin and ask them, I said, what does digital mean to you? The answer for the most of it was hovering around Facebook, social media, and all of that. What's comforting for me, okay, the conversation has really evolved. Because I walked out of that meeting really scratching my head and asking myself, if these people don't even know this, what else do they not know? And the world is going by. If you think about one transaction of Uber or Kareem that you do every day, or many of you do every day, some of you every day, or some you do with trips. The number of industries that converge to make that one transaction happen will boggle your mind. Financial services, telecommunications, infrastructure, government, software, hardware, financial services, social media, name a pick, I'm sure there are more. They all work together to form one transaction. That's where things are headed. It's convergence. If someone says what industry you belong to, today you belong to the pharma industry. But I think the panel aptly pointed out that now Google is pharma industry as well. Who are you? Ask yourself these questions. And if you're not asking yourself these questions, someone else is asking them for you and doing a better job at it than you. The next panel will, will showcase some startups. And those startups are slowly chipping away at everything you're doing. Many of you have been growing 25%, 30% year over year, and you're chesting your thumb and saying, yes. We are the masters of the universe. I have news for you. Karachi mein kisi ne 20 saal se kachra nahi uthaya hai. Uski wajah se airborne diseases badhti jati hain. Aapki dawaiyan bikhti rehti hain. Innovation nahi aari aapki taraf se. It's a fool's paradise. And I apologize for stating the obvious, guys. This is a reflection in the mirror. Because I ask my, myself every day, what is this industry doing? You're a beneficiary of poor governance by the government. Chinese come and cut I don't remember chicken gunia when I was growing up or these kinds of diseases. It's important to start to understand that innovation diseases can be coming in. That you have to constantly embody, constantly fight. But whether it's clinical trials or understanding your own data or understanding where you need to head, all of that is at play. Typical innovation cycle is completely fragmented. We all have a digital division maybe that comes to the CEO Saab or the state and says, wow, we have 5,000 likes. Congratulations. Go monetize them. What does that like do for you? Does getting a Facebook like mean that you're doing better at your business? I don't have to answer that question. The Facebook like is the last end of your entire business stream. During this IBA journey, which is interesting to deal with farmers, one farmer leader came to me and said, uh, Javed Saab, bas marketing batayin, digital marketing. I said, okay, aap baithe abhi. Teen ghande baad baat karenge marketing ki. So we talked about the entire gamut of things and said, every aspect of your supply chain, every aspect of your operations, every aspect of your finance, if you're not looking to automate that, if you're not looking to get information out of that, you don't know what your social media strategy is. 
and they ask you, oh, what should we post? Because the next pharma is posting this on social media. Well, what, what year were you, were, was your uh, pharmaceutical company born? 1959, that's a social media post. Be yourself, understand yourself, and bring this innovation from inside. That is data. Who can tell me here that one hour in the 24 hours, the most food is delivered in Karachi? One person. That one hour in the 24 hour period, the most food is delivered in Karachi. Nani, ghanta kaun sa hai wo? 11 to 12, PM, AM. PM, raat ko. Okay, what else? 10 to 11, PM. 9 to 10 PM for food. Anyone else? Who said that? 12 to 1, when? Do we have a prize to give him? 12 to 1 is when the most food is delivered in Karachi. What is delivered? Pizza is the most delivered food at 12 to 1 a.m. in Karachi. That's precision data. That's food panda for you. So if I was to start a business today in Karachi, what do you think I will do? I will just get a pizza van, sara din soye, or pizza banai raat ko deliver kare. What is your equivalent of that precision data? Do you know? Now how is this going to be achieved? You all have been making a lot of money in the last 30 years. What you don't know is you need to be spending a lot of money on technology. I had somebody recently called me, somebody mentioned CRM. I did a lot of work in the customer space. Can I best CRM? I said, tell me your business. How can I tell you a best CRM if, if I don't know your business? Oh, best CRM that just cost $100,000. So I said, why even spend $100,000? Go spend the, go find the, the free version. Put your data out there. Be non-GDPR compliant. Abhi aap logo ko ye nahi pata ke agle 10 saal mein jo lawyers ki chandi hogi aap logo ke data ke upar. Because you've been cheap, you did not invest in the right tools, that were not compliant, and, and lawyers are going to have a field day with all of you. Wake up. Now the second thing is, who's teaching you all this? When was the last time any of you went and sat in a class? You would gladly drop 2 crore rupees on your son's education abroad. You would not spend 2 lakh rupees on a class for yourself? Dubai mein le lenge ja ke ji. Dubai doesn't know Pakistan's problems. It's staggering for me to see that we believe we know it all. But I think we've clearly demonstrated someone else is chipping away at your business. I recently met Khaled Awan sahab, uh, owner of TCS. And I went to him and I said, Khaled sahab, I have to apologize on something. He said, ji. I said, I, I used your company's name in the not most positive way. He said, how is that? I said, I was being interviewed and I, in one of the responses said, if I am a Kareem driver, I'm dropping somebody off. On the way back, I'll pick up a package too. What is TS TCS's business model then? Right? So if you're a manufacturer, if you're a logistics 3PL provider, if you're a retailer, if you're a hospital, whatever you are, there is someone out there disrupting you. 
Jana, run, Jana runs a, a nest, which is an incubator. No idea, no industry is undisruptible. And I think I've already established that all these industries are even converging to make this happen. So what are the first thing you guys need to do? Open your mindset. No one religion change your religion. You can't do this country. Right? Second thing. Find out where you sit. Do you have a vision for innovation? Vision jo banaya tha, dada ne. Legacy chal rahi hai, which is great. But dada passed away 40 years ago. You have to deliver for the millennials and the alphas and so forth. And once you get that vision made, have someone find out where you stand. They should audit you. They should find out how digitally mature you are. And once you know that, have somebody make a road map for you. That you have to in the next five technology is the process is better. Learn from other industries that are on the verge of disruption. Every banker that I talk to is shivering because every fintech is out there, every wallet is out there to take their lunch away. Automation is your enemy. It will happen. It will be better than you in many cases. And at the end, once you've done all that, just remember one thing. Do it again. Because technology and business is a moving goalpost. You will innovate today. I am sorry to say, in two years, it will be obsolete again. You will have to continue to move up and move up and move up. I leave you with this one thought. The thought that keeps sometimes me up at night, the thought that I've already shared with you. And every time I'm in a board meeting, I, ask, I tell this story, and at the end, I ask this one question. Are you ready to innovate for the six-year-old girl? Thank you. <laughs>